So we're now thinking about the functions of the liver in terms of protein metabolism. Now the liver cells are able to change one form of amino acid into another form of amino acid, at least on some occasions with some types of amino acids. Now the amino acids are the subunits of proteins. So there's one amino acid unit. And then there's something called a peptide bond which connects it to another amino acid unit. And then another amino acid. And these string together to form long peptide chains which form proteins. So these are the amino acids. Now human proteins contain 20 different amino acids. And all of these need to be available for the processes of growth and repair as these are synthesized into bigger molecules and they have a primary structure and they fold round into secondary and tertiary structures to give three dimensional shapes. Now of these 20 required amino acids, 10 can be produced in the liver from other amino acids. So of the 20, the liver is able to synthesize 10 from other amino acids. But the other 10 can't be converted. Therefore, the 10 which cannot be converted from other amino acids must be present in the diet because the liver can't synthesize them. If health is to be maintained, they must be present in the diet. The 10 dietary essential amino acids. And these are the 10 which cannot be produced in the liver. Therefore, they are essential. Now, the amino acids which can be produced by the liver by conversion are called non-essential amino acids. Not because they're not necessary for normal physiology, but because health can be maintained even if they're not part of the diet, as long as there are adequate amounts of other amino acids to transfer into the amino acids that we need. And this process of conversion of one amino acid to another is a fundamental function of the liver, and that's called transamination. So transamination is changing one amino acid into another. So essential amino acids can be converted into non-essential amino acids. But of course, the non-essential can't be converted into the essential amino acids because they are essential as part of the diet. Now, if more proteins are consumed than are required, the excess amino acids are utilised for their energy yielding content. But before the proteins can be used to produce carbohydrate or fat, they must first be chemically broken down. And this process is called deamination. So deamination is the breaking down of amino acids into things that can be used as substrates for fuels, like carbohydrates and fats. And again, like these other liver functions, this is occurring in the individual hepatocytes that make up the liver. And the products of this process of deamination can be used for energy immediately, or they can be converted into glycogen or into fats for longer term storage. Now, another essential function of the liver is that it forms and uh, excretes plasma proteins. So plasma proteins are made in the liver and they are excreted into the plasma. And this includes the clotting proteins. So formation of plasma proteins and formation of the clotting proteins. In fact, the liver forms, uh, I think, all of the plasma proteins except the immunoglobulins, the antibodies. They're produced by the uh, B lymphocytes. Now, albumin is the most abundant plasma protein and is produced by the hepatocytes and then released into the blood as you would expect. And albumin is a very large protein. In fact, uh, chicken albumin, you'll have seen when uh, you eat an egg because it's made, that is the white part of the egg is made of albumin. But of course, this is human albumin because it's being produced by a human liver and human hepatocytes. And the albumin is a particularly large protein and it's essential for the maintenance of the osmolarity of the plasma which is needed to facilitate osmotic reabsorption of the tissue fluids. This is sometimes called the colloidal osmotic pressure or the oncotic pressure. It's the, the reabsorption that we need. So you probably remember that in the capillaries we have uh, capillary endothelial cells with small gaps. 
and that the tissue fluid is going to be formed at the arterial end of the capillary but it needs to be reabsorbed at the venous end of the capillary. So it's formed at the arterial end of the capillary because the hydrostatic pressure is greater than the osmotic pressure and it's reabsorbed at the venous end because the osmotic pressure is greater than the hydrostatic pressure and sucks it back in. But of course if we're short of uh, plasma proteins, particularly the albumin produced by the liver, then this is not going to be sucked back in and we'll be left with edema. So patients who are hypoproteinemic often become edematous because they're not sucking this back in. This is why you'll have seen pictures of uh, malnourished children who have swollen tummies and they are edematous because they don't have the plasma proteins to suck the fluid back in. So the child needs to be fed protein and the proteins will be broken down in the digestive tract to amino acids. The amino acids will go to the liver and the liver is more than capable of producing all the albumin that's required as long as we have these essential amino acids. And yet tragically we get malnourished children who are edematous. So simple but so tragic. Now albumin uh, is also described as a carrier molecule transporting sub-substances around in the circulatory system. For example, some drugs are transported bound to albumin. It's called protein binding of drugs. Now, clotting proteins. The liver cells produce uh, several of the clotting protein factors such as prothrombin and uh, fibrinogen. So fibrinogen is present in the blood and it, but then when there's the right trigger, the fibrinogen precipitates into long sticky strands of fibrin that stick to each other. But because they're sticky, the blood cells will also uh, stick to the sticky strands of fibrin, forming a blood clot, which of course is essential for hemostasis. If there's any form of trauma, causing hemorrhage. So if liver function is compromised, production of these plasma clotting proteins is going to be reduced. And this rapidly leads to hemorrhagic problems as patients are no longer able to form blood clots. So patients with liver failure can have contusions and bruises and uh, hemorrhagic problems because they lack these clotting proteins. And another protein that we've mentioned in previous videos is, is angiotensinogen. Do you remember the angiotensinogen? Part of the uh, angiotensin renin aldosterone system and the, for the regulation of blood pressure. And you might remember that the angiotensinogen, when it's acted on by renin, is converted into angiotensin. So we see that these amazing hepatocytes are converting one form of amino acid into another in this process of transamination. They're breaking amino acids down to form energy in this process of deamination. And they're producing a wide range of proteins which have essential systemic physiological functions.